When I began my term as council president, it was important to me that the county council lead Montgomery County through a focused and effective recovery effort. So on my first day, I made a commitment that in 2021, we would work together to make Montgomery County stronger, healthier, more prosperous, more equitable, and more sustainable than the county of 12 months ago. I pledge to you that I will do my best to ensure that we work collaboratively, effectively, and respectfully to address the tremendous challenges we have ahead. It's been harder than we imagined, but I am proud to say that the Montgomery County Council has upheld that commitment. None of us do this for recognition, but there were three moments this year that showed me we were on the right track. First, we were honored recently by rebuilding together Montgomery County, chaired by former Council President Nancy Florine, for our innovative policy work and record investments to meet our commitments to our ambitious regional housing goals. This council was also honored by the NAACP this year with their Community Service Award, recognizing our outstanding performance and unparalleled leadership on the NAACP's core issues, including efforts to advance racial equity and social justice and to reform our police. I was thrilled to hear the branch president say our council was the best council she had worked with in 20 years. And on the one year anniversary of COVID, Dr. Anthony Fauci joined our session to thank the Montgomery County Council for the leadership we showed as the Board of Health during the pandemic by over and over making science-based decisions to protect our residents, particularly our most vulnerable. I am delighted to have this opportunity to congratulate and thank the county council and community leaders of Montgomery County who have worked so hard in responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. There is still so much work to do, but over and over, this county council has come together to make the tough decisions to keep our county moving forward. When the pandemic started, none of us had an operations manual for dealing with the worst health crisis since the 1918 flu or the worst recession since the Great Depression. I've tried to build on what we began under the leadership of Council President Novato and Council President Katz during this term, working together as one county to address problems and support our families and our local businesses, and to provide the leadership that our residents expect and deserve. When I became president, COVID vaccines were not yet available. So the council, acting as the county's board of health, worked hand in glove with our public health team to issue one board of health regulation after another, all of which have kept people safe and saved lives. And then once vaccines were approved, Montgomery County was not receiving enough doses so this county council worked together with our health team and our state and federal officials to fight for our fair share of doses for our 1.1 million residents, as well as to open the mass vaccination site in Montgomery County that we deserved. Once vaccines became widely available, Montgomery County's persistent health disparities created an equity gap in vaccinations, just as we had seen on the equity gaps in COVID testing last year. So the council insisted on the staff and the funding to make vaccine distribution equitable and accessible to every resident across the county, regardless of their zip code. When vaccines became available, the council immediately focused on addressing inequities and ensuring all residents had access to the vaccine. The council members shined in helping us really access the different resources that existed in the county um, and helped us to be more effective in getting that vaccine out to our community. I want to especially thank Chair Navarro and Chair Albernoz for their leadership and all of our colleagues for our shared commitment to ensure that all of our residents, particularly our underserved communities, receive the public health assistance that they needed and that our programs were truly implemented equitably. As a result, we now not only have the highest vaccination rate in the nation for large counties, but we've significantly addressed racial equity gaps that we saw first in testing and later in vaccinations. I am so proud of the work that we have done with our health department and our community leaders to keep our residents safe. But helping our residents recover meant more than addressing the health impacts of COVID. It meant supporting families and loved ones of the county employees that tragically passed during COVID-19 and helping all those who were suffering. It meant working with our department heads and hardworking county employees during the most turbulent two years in a generation. It meant managing change and investing in our communities because we knew that we had to act urgently to address the challenges and opportunities. And it meant all of that and more because when I think back on this past year as council president, there's a common thread that ties everything together that we accomplished 
and that is the leadership and the teamwork displayed by our council members and our staff. Over this past year, this council came together time and time again to set the direction for the county government and to address the greatest needs in our community. Our Government Operations Committee, led by Chair Novato, continued to provide strong fiscal oversight and leadership, including by recommending new fiscal policies to strengthen the Council's control over future spending. These new policies help set us up to retain our AAA bond rating for the 48th year, a national record worth celebrating even more in these lean times. Our Education and Culture Committee, chaired by Councilmember Rice, led our work to get our kids back to school safely. Working with Superintendent McKnight and MCPS, this council has worked through many of the challenges that arose from reopening. And we're still working to address learning loss and to place mental health professionals in all of our schools. As former student member of the school board, I appreciate the council working closely with MCPS to keep students and staff safe during the pandemic. I thank the council for listening to youth voices during these challenging times. Their strong focus on equity made them excellent role models of the leaders we need to be for our community. Chair Reamer continued the Fed Committee's work to help our county achieve our critical housing goals by passing our new growth and infrastructure policy. And the committee has spent countless hours to move Thrive 2050 forward, our county's land use vision, past this pandemic and into the future. Councilmember Juwando also showed essential leadership not only to push to reopen our libraries, but as a Fed member by sponsoring policies and new funding to keep families in their homes and to help head off an eviction crisis. And I want to thank Councilmember Friedson for his work on Fed as well as the lead for our parks and his relentless focus to keep the lights on for our small businesses. Andrew's work as the voice of business helped stand up the new programs that this council used to invest over $80 million in business relief since COVID began. Montgomery County must also strive to be a model for 21st century public safety. So as the chair of the Public Safety Committee, Councilmember Katz brought together our public safety agencies and stakeholders to support our police and firefighters on the front lines, to deliver more transparency and accountability, to expand our mobile crisis outreach teams, and to keep our community safe. Council Vice President Gabe Albernoz helped our HHS committee and our departments navigate critically important work to implement our health orders, our testing, and our vaccination plans. And from our partnership this year, I know Gabe has been through the crucible and is extremely well prepared to serve our county as the next county council president. And Councilmember Glass led our efforts to protect our most vulnerable residents, our homeless, during this unprecedented crisis. And his advocacy on the Transportation and Environment Committee helped keep our council's transportation policy focused on moving people, not just cars, and on allowing pedestrians and cyclists to get where they need to go safely. And as chair of the Transportation and Environment Committee, I've been really thankful for the support of all my colleagues as we made the critical transportation and infrastructure investments that we need to meet our economic goals. We also work to improve equity in transportation by keeping bus fares free for all of our riders whose average income is $35,000 per year. And we pass new policies and proposed historic funding to reduce our carbon footprint and address our climate emergency. The council and the planning board have moved very aggressively to advance new plans and projects to create more affordable housing, to build better transportation infrastructure, especially for transit, biking and walking. This county council did all of this work and more to lead Montgomery County's recovery from COVID. And we still met our core responsibility to deliver a balanced budget to take up many new policies and to continue our important oversight work. Nothing in our core work is more important than the county budget. Budgets are moral documents and that's never more true than during a crisis. Our $6 billion budget created a roadmap for immediate recovery and set us up for the long-term revitalization that awaits us beyond this pandemic. We fully funded the contracts for our tireless county employees and educators to make sure they knew we had their backs during this crisis and we made new investments in mental health for our students, affordable housing, and improved transit, all while holding the line on taxes. Because our quality schools are core to our success, we were even able to fully fund our school budget as well as Montgomery College and to provide municipal governments like Rockville and Gaithersburg and Tacoma Park with the support that they deserve. And even though we received a capital budget with a $100 million gap in it, 
This council managed to avoid proposed delays to the construction of Woodward and Northwood high schools and to keep the Purple Line Tunnel on schedule as well. And once the budget was complete, I enjoyed sharing our accomplishments in meetings with all three rating agencies, each of which continued Montgomery County's AAA bond rating for the 48th year, which is a national record. But county taxpayers can't foot the bill to address all the county's needs by ourselves, nor should we have to. We deserve much more support from the state and federal governments. So that's why I organized a statewide coalition with Senators Van Hollen and Cardin, Congressman Brown and Trone, Treasurer Kopp and Comptroller Francho, and my council president colleagues from Baltimore City and County, Prince George's, Anne Arundel, Calvert, and Charles Counties, as well as the NAACP, CASA, National Organization for Women, and leaders from all 24 jurisdictions to call on the governor to release a statewide stimulus package. From every corner of the state and from all walks of life who have come together for one purpose, to call on Governor Hogan to relieve the suffering by implementing a Maryland stimulus. Governor Hogan saw what we had built, and 20 minutes after we wrapped up our last rally, he announced $1 billion in relief for our residents and small businesses. I continued to work with leaders of the House and the Senate to improve that package and to get it onto the governor's desk for his signature. And later, I met directly with U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg and Congressman Anthony Brown to present the need for investments in smart, sustainable projects in our region, like the extension of the Red Line, completion of the Purple Line, expansion of our popular bus rapid transit system, and the CCT. Our budget efforts, like our response to COVID, should always be a team effort with our terrific partners at the state and the federal level. And this year, they were. I am really proud of what we were able to achieve for our residents together. And because there's no place for hatred in our county, we called out incidents of hate and bigotry wherever they occurred, and we stood together with our Asian, Jewish, Black, Latino, LGBT, and faith communities. And after several years of advocacy, we successfully urged the Board of Elections to establish an early voting site in White Oak to ensure voters across the county have the same ease of access to cast their ballots. This has been an incredibly difficult year for all of us. But we also made serious progress, and that's a testament to the way our community has come together and supported one another during this time. This year, the Montgomery County Council has kept our county government on the path we committed to, to building a county that is stronger, healthier, more prosperous, more equitable, and more sustainable. But our work is not done. I know the entire council will continue working together on behalf of all of our residents. It's been a great honor to serve Montgomery County as the council president, and I could not be more proud of all we've achieved together. So thank you to all my council colleagues for all your hard work, your dedication, and your support through this year of recovery. <laughs>